What's up everyone, Devin from Debo's Fishing here, and today I wanna to talk about my top three ways and lures to fish brush. Now listen, brush can be a broad term that all kinds of people use to talk about wood, wood piles, actual brush piles, whether that's natural or man-made. Now I'm really gonna break this down into three categories as I'm going through these and talking about these tips and lures. Number one is gonna be the sunken brush. So whether, again, that's man-made or natural, growing up fishing brush usually meant we would use our, you know, our electronics, nothing fancy. You know, you'd be able to see on the graph that there was something down there and you'd be able to find the brush pile. You throw out your floating buoy, you mark it, you fish it that way, right? That was to me fishing brush growing up. Now, as I've gotten older, you'll often hear me referring on my channel to fishing the brush as any sort of those, you know, submergent bushes, buck brush people call it, or bull rush, button brush. There's all kinds of different names for it. It gets those little white yellow flowers on it. It's essentially really can be looked at as any type of woody stemmy plant that's growing shallow that you're fishing in to try to catch those bass hiding there. And number three for me is going to be any sort of overhangs or falling down trees, you know, trees that are partially submerged. A lot of people will call that brush. Oh, I, was, I was fishing the shallow brush. That's what they're really talking about. So I'm going to kind of break it down into the O's three and keep that in mind as I'm going through this. Uh, and I will try to give a shout out to you bank anglers to give a few more tips because I feel like y'all miss a, a lot of the love out there. All right, so the first lure, listen, it doesn't matter what type of brush you're talking about. This is one that will tackle it all. And really, it could have either been this or a jig, but when it comes to fishing brush in the months right now, these warm summer months, I don't think you can be a Texas rigged bait. Now, growing up for me, you know, my old man was an awesome worm fisherman. So for me, that was always like an eight and a half inch. This is a 10 inch, I think. Uh, Tequila Sunrise Berkeley Power Bait Worm. That was what we threw all the time. I would try to get away with like throwing a, you know, a red shad or green pumpkin, but my old man kicked my butt with these. Now, as I've gotten older, I've experimented with a whole lot more. And like I said, you could really interchange this with a jig. If you ask, I would say 10 folks, their top five lures for fish and brush, most of them are either gonna have a jig or Texas rig on there as one of those lures. Great way to attack it because just like a jig, you know, the Texas rig is so weedless. When I Texas rig this worm and Texpose it, I can throw it into the heart of that bush. And there's some plastics we'll talk about here that do better than that at, uh, than others. But you know, I throw it by wood, brush and stuff. I'm not really gonna get hung up that much with a Texas rig lure. Now, I say lure because you really gotta keep in mind what type of brush or wood you're fishing. You know, if it's something really thick, you might want a lure like this instead of a big long worm that can kind of get wrapped in the brush and caught in it. Something like this, this is for you, uh, you know, your old heads out there that like to throw these. These are the, the, uh, the pit boss, man. This is an old one that has caught so many fish. You can see it's aerodynamic and go straight in that brush out, but it's still got kick on it. During the summer months now, I definitely want something that has some action to kick. Warm water, they're definitely willing to eat. They're not necessarily willing to chase though. So that's why brush can be such a good spot because you take something like this, another one of my absolute favorites, the Missile Baits D-Bomb, that's in the super bug color. It's got a kick back there. They're willing to eat, but they're oftentimes not willing to travel, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet to go get it. So they might be sit tucked right in the middle of that brush. You throw this right in front of them. They're like, oh, heck yeah, I'm gonna eat that. Now, or in the cooler months, or if I really want something that's absolutely aerodynamic or water dynamic or brush dynamic, something that's just gonna go straight in and come out would be like a beaver. This doesn't really have any kick or anything on it, but there's no real appendages and you could even cut these off if you wanted. No real appendages to get stuck. You know, it goes straight down through the brush and you can bring it straight back out with it without it getting tangled and caught up. So that's why a Texas rig is so good in the thick woody brush, big trees, lay downs, doesn't matter. Texas rigs are great. Okay, a couple tips for fishing the brush with a Texas rig. Take a look at this brush pile. Where would you cast first? Here? Here? How about here? Well, for me, it's always gonna be picking apart the outside edges of the brush, the closest spot, kind of the outside farther edges of it. That way, if I catch a fish on those, I can bring it straight back to me and I'm not interrupting everything in the middle. If I cast to the way back, deepest, darkest place of it, which might be really where the only spot the fish are hiding, but if I cast there first and get a good fish, I'm hitting all that brush and probably scaring everything between me and that fish that I just caught. So. Work the close side, work the edges, and then start working your way in and back as you go. That way, if there's fish there, you're not spooking them all. Tip number two is gonna be get where everybody else is not while being stealthy. It's kind of a two-parter, I know, but get where everybody else isn't. Skipping up under that brush, under those overhangs, the spot where most people don't really wanna mess with, Oftentimes those hard to get spots are where the fish are, you know, especially nowadays, there's so much pressure. Everybody's throwing a spinner bait or a crank bait or a Texas rig on the edge of that brush, but there might only be one of the 10 boats that, that made a pass and threw one cast back in there. 
get to those hard to reach spots. And I say do it as stealthy as possible because listen, big bass have got that way for a reason, right? They're not eating everything and you know anything that comes in front of them, they've learned. That's a whole different episode about conditioning fish to lures, but try to be as stealthy as you can because oftentimes you get one shot at a spot and if you hang up on a branch or tie up on a dock or something, you have to go over there, you've spooked everything. So really be diligent about where and how you're putting that lure in there and make that first cast or pitch, whatever it is, count. Okay, the second lure for me on the list has to be a buzzbait. Man, the buzzbait does so well when you've got a little bit of a ripple on the water, even especially during like a little bit of a storm rain coming in. Uh, you know, you've got cloudy kind of overcast conditions. You know, those are all the perfect, you know, ideal fishing conditions, right? And you think of throwing one of these during these months. But in my opinion, people tend to put away top water no matter what it is, tend to put it away a little bit too early. You know, the sun starts to come up, they see that and they're fishing other stuff or they might right away switch to finesse if they haven't got a bite in a while. But the buzzbait is so good because you can start fishing those overhangs where there's trees, you know, just barely in the water. You can just barely get under them. To me, that's still fishing brush. A lot of people will call that brush even though it isn't, you know, technically a brush pile. But you have brush piles that are just barely under the water. You might see just like two sticks sticking up, but you might be in six foot of water with a big huge brush pile under it, you know, that's 10, 10 feet across, something like that. Bringing this over it is such a good way to draw those fish up and out of there because it's got a ton of drawing power. It's got vibration. It's got that click, depending on what type of buzz bait you have. Some of them have clickers and knockers. This is the crocodile gator and the, the blade actually hits against the head of it and makes kind of a thud sound. Don't be afraid to keep one of these in hand longer throughout the day. You know, fishing the uh, the shaded side of the lake. As the sun comes up, you've got the side that's going to have shade longer than the other. Fish that side with one of these. And nowadays, like I was saying, there's so many of these. You can go with something that's got uh, like this. You can see this is the finesse wheeler buzzbait from Accent. It comes with a skirt, but it doesn't already come rigged on there. So you can put a plastic on it like a toad or a paddle tail. There's some out there like this one from Greenfish that come equipped already for a plastic. So no skirt, you thread the plastic up and over it. And this piece kind of helps, helps keep it held on there. Again, that's one with a clacker there like I was talking about. And I like to use these kind uh, with a plastic on the back of it. I call it a naked buzzbait. Uh, you know, take any sort of buzz bait with a keeper on it and just put a plastic on there instead of the uh, the skirt. I think those do better now in the warmer summer months, mimicking like a, you know, whether it's a bluegill up there or a frog up there. I think it gives them something a little bit better to, uh, to lock onto. As the weather gets colder, kind of dropping down toward that 60 degree mark, I do go over to a skirted buzz bait. I think they do better in cooler water. And one more thing to talk about and consider is the size of the blade. How much drawing power this is really going to have different sizes, there's different types. You've got finesse, you've got some of these that really have a big blade and clacker. Guess that doesn't have a clacker, but a big blade that's gonna make more noise. You know what I mean. Depending on how much drawing power you want, you can alter what kind of buzz bait you throw in. So keep that in mind. Okay, my two tips. This isn't anything earth shattering. Number one, vary your speed. I know this sounds simple, but you've been out fishing all morning. You haven't got a bite. You thought the day was gonna be great. And guess what? You throw that lure out there and you start getting into zombie mode. I talk about it all the time. People get complacent and they're just kind of going through the motions. Vary up your speed. Sometimes they want it just barely where it's clicking and just give them a little blah, 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 just a very tiny subtle. Other times they want it loud, man. It's it's loud, obnoxious, and they're not eating it because they're hungry. They're pissed off at it. They're coming up and aggressively reacting to that and hitting it. So vary up those speeds. You can even give it little twitches and pops. Vary that up and oftentimes that's enough to start getting bites. The second thing, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, saying that you can kind of weave these through brush and stuff. Get as close as you can to things and hit them. Oftentimes those bites will come when you, you know, kind of ricochet or carry them. When that cadence, you know, you're just kind of slowly going, and it does something weird, gives that fish something to react to. So hit those branches. Don't be afraid to come over those logs. The biggest mistake you can make with a buzz bait when you're coming over that stuff is giving it slack line. So keep that tip up, keep reeling, keep constant pressure and try to keep that buzz bait running up, straight up and down so it just kind of comes up and over things as much as possible. You get in trouble when you let it fall and die and fall on its side, that's when you're gonna get hung up. All right, last but not least on my list, we have got to talk about our spinnerbait. Spinnerbaits and wood go together like peanut butter and jelly. I'm telling you, this was one of the first, actually the first confidence lure for me growing up. Like I said, 
old man was excellent at fishing uh, worms. My buddy, or his buddy, excellent at fishing jigs. You know, these guys that would catch them different ways, and I would oftentimes just lock a spinnerbait in my hand because I could cast it out and reel it in. Even if I wasn't catching stuff, I was doing things. I was practicing my accuracy, practicing how far I could cast. And then I started catching fish, and then I started to catch on, okay, where did I catch that? How did I catch it? And around wood seemed to be a place that I always wanted to throw these because very likely you were going to get a bite off of it. So it doesn't matter which one of the types of brush you're talking about. Um, you know, there's guys that throw one ounce spinner baits on ledges, you know, to deep piles of brush. I'm not a big deep water fisherman, but you know, if I'm fishing 10 feet or less, three eighths or a half ounce spinner bait, you can get it down to that, knock it over that, uh, you know, flooded trees or bushes or stuff up there. Of course, this does awesome. Standing timber. I know that's not necessarily brush, but does excellent. So it really doesn't matter what type of brush or wood uh, you know, vegetation you're, you're talking about with woody stems or whatever, these come over at well. Anyway, sizes, when it comes to size of these, uh, and I guess colors, an all white or a white and chartreuse have historically been my favorite. You can mess with those colors, there's more translucent colors now, but you know, I think just a regular bait fish profile, this is oftentimes going past them pretty quick, they're just reacting, um, something like that. Sizes, three eighths or a half ounce is everything that I throw. Three eighths is great just kind of as a do it all. It's great to kind of target cast if you're making short casts. As a bank angler, I have gone to a half ounce more. Sometimes these can get squirrely in the air when you cast them, uh, if there's a little bit of wind and stuff. Half ounce kind of helps combat that from the bank. You can get a little bit longer casts. Uh, it doesn't seem to get caught up in the air and make your backlash as much. So those are the kinds I go to. We could get all into the blades and everything, but I usually keep it pretty simple. Um, either a tandem like with the Willow or Colorado, or a double willow is what I fish most of all, especially a double willow when it's a little bit calmer, you want to have a little bit less vibration, um, uh, you know, a bigger Colorado or like an Indiana or something like that, they have a lot more vibration. So if you're in muddier water, uh, you know, conditions where you really need to pull those fish, you can change your blades. But honestly, most of the time I'm throwing a tandem no matter what the, uh, the conditions are. Okay, the two things to think about when you're fishing a spinnerbait. Number one, a spinnerbait has a lot of power. You've got vibration from the blades. You've got flash from the blades. You've got skirt movement. You've got, if you have a plastic trailer on there, a worm or you know a fluke type thing, it's back there with kind of the secondary motion movement. It's got a lot going on, right? So you don't want to really throw these in a slick, calm, you know, ultra clear. There's spinnerbaits for that, translucent, more finesse, but for me, when I have the most luck, I want a little bit of ripple on the water or I want kind of cloudy overcast. Something where fish are generally going to be up moving more, looking for something to eat and not really tuck you know, their head into timber, not moving anywhere. That's where I throw that Texas rig. Now, speaking about that draw and power and fish being in that, again, it's kind of like the buzz bait. I'm going to get this as close as I can to stuff. And I know when I was younger, I fished safe. And that would mean if I saw a brush pile there, I'd stay two, three feet away from it because my ultimate thing was I didn't want to get snagged, right? Um, and one of the things that made the most sense to me that I heard is when you're fishing a lure, fish it like you've already lost it, right? Don't get too attached to a lure. You can buy another one. And I know, you know, obviously that's different for everybody. You might have a budget or whatever, but if you're fishing really, really safe out and away from stuff, oftentimes you're going to be missing a lot of bites. So get as close to that wood as you can. Hit that wood, bounce over it. And it's the same thing with the buzz bait. Keep your odd tip high as you're going over that and keep reeling. Don't hit a log unless you know it's like one log you can see. Um, you know, don't hit it and then just let it flutter down and get on its side. That's when you're going to get snagged. When you're coming up and over that brush, trying to weave it through it, keep your rod tip up and keep going with it. It'll hit that, carom over it, just to show you what I mean. It's set up like this to go up over things. So as long as you're keeping your rod tip up, it'll oftentimes ride over that. You get in trouble when you kill it and let it go on its side like that. So keep that baby going. See, even something like this, this is a war eagle that's got like a two-tone skirt. So it looks like a fish back there flapping and swimming. Number two, and this is one that I don't think people think about enough is put movement, put motion, put reaction things into your spinnerbait. What I mean is, again, like the buzzbait, people will get in that complacent, you know, just cast it, reel it, cast it, reel it. And a lot of times with the spinnerbait, that's all you need to do. Uh, you know, I'm keeping it within the foot of the top of the water, over that brush, uh, you know, through that brush, that buck brush, weaving it through there. Fish are going to come up and hit it. It looks like a little bait ball, right? It's got flash, vibration. They're just going to come up and react to it. It looks like something to eat. But if you're kind of in sparse wood or if you want to give it a little, you know, pop or action to it, you can do that by your rod tip. So as I'm bringing a spinnerbait through, oftentimes I'll give it a couple pops as I'm bringing it through reel and pop, pop, pop. And that's going to make that skirt undulate, your plastic undulate. It's going to make those blades, you know, kind of go crazy ways, give off a little bit more flash. So 
Don't be afraid to add little twitches and pops in there as you're bringing it through, or even lift your rod tip up a little bit, as long as you're not gonna get snagged. Lift your rod tip up a little bit and just give that bait a little something different. Um, oftentimes that will draw the strike for you. So listen, do me a favor, comment below and let me know what your favorite way to fish brush is. Again, I think there's a bunch of different ways people uh, will call fishing brush, whether it's laydowns, overhangs, submerged trees, this, you know, the buck brush stuff. Could be even be brush piles, you know, 20 foot down. Again, kind of a little bit different from what I was talking about today, but you can still do that with the text rig dragging it by it. But comment below and let me know what your favorite way to attack brush is. Uh, again, my name is Devin from Debo's Fishing. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time.